It's a joke between us. Shh. I hope that you had a fantastic week celebrating with your family and hopefully maybe with your friends. Today we'll be wrapping up our ser series on Simply Christmas. What is the memory verse this week or this month? Hmm. Oh, that's right. It's Luke 2.11. Nolan, how about you share the memory verse? Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Thank you for sharing the memory verse, Nolan. Great job. Today we are going, we're going to play a game. You will need five clear glasses per person playing in a pile of M&Ms or Skittles, depending on your preference. Here's how you play. In front of you is a pile of Skittles and five clear glasses. Your job is to separate the Skittles color by color, one at a time, into each of the glasses. However, you just can't put all the red ones in one glass, all the green ones in another. You have to put them, you have to do them one color at a time. One red in the first class, then one green in the next class, and then one blue in the next, and so on down the line. First one to separate all the colors 
into the glasses is the winner. Ready, set, go! stressful? Think about how you were feeling trying to separate all those colors. Discuss with others if you ha happen to have friends or family close by. Now let's try something a little bit different. Dump the Skittles into a pile and let's start over. This time it's not a race. You can separate them however you like. You can eat, even eat a few while as you are working. Yum yum. You can put them in the glasses all at once or one at a time. It's up to you. Are you ready? Set? different from the first time. Why was this time so much less stressful? Why do you think that is? All right, so that was fun. Now I have a few questions for you. What is the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word peace? Not like, are you gonna eat that last piece of pie? But more, I am at peace with how much pie I ate this Christmas. Pie. Oh wait, where was I? That's right. What do you think? What does peace mean to you? It kind of seems like there hasn't been a lot of peace going around, especially in 2020, dun dun dun. Everyone has been stressed out. What's it like for you when things aren't peaceful? How can we find peace when things are most certainly not peaceful? In the middle of the chaos, when it feels no one understands what we're feeling or what we're going through, where can peace be found? These are great questions, and thankfully we can start to find the answers by heading back to the book of Luke. We're picking up the story where we left off, and if you weren't here, let's take a look at our artwork hanging on the wall. What's wrong? You can't tell what's going on in this amazing piece of art? That is clearly Bethlehem over there, and that is clearly a mutated anteater. Wait, mutated anteaters? I didn't know Jesus was born surrounded by mutated anteaters. Well, of course, Jesus wasn't born surrounded by anteaters, but there was definitely some sort of animals around, probably not mutated, probably. To sum up last week, Mary and Joseph made the long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem to find there weren't any rooms available. So, they hunkered down in a place with the animals, and Jesus was born there. Picking up right after that, at right after Jesus being was born, we find shepherds. Shepherds lived out in the fields near Bethlehem. These shepherds were some of the least important people you might meet. It wasn't the most glamorous job. Long hours, predators, and lots of stink, if you know what I mean. These men and boys lived outside, keeping the, she the sheep safe in the wind and storms and protecting them from wild animals, which means that there were shepherds working that night when Jesus was born. They were milling about with the sheep, making sure they are safe, when suddenly, <clears throat> suddenly, the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. Ah! Terrified. The shepherds tried to shield their eyes. They had never encountered anything like this before. They huddled together in fear. Then all of a sudden, an angel spoke. 
Let's see what the angel said. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. You can tell me to don't be afraid all you want when a booming voice comes from an angel from a bright light in the sky. I just might be a wee bit startled, don't you think? The angel said, don't, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in, this, in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. The shepherds, pretty bewildered, squinted around at each other in the light of the angel. How could this actually be the Savior that had been prophesied for about for hundreds of years before? Before they could even muster up a response, the entire sky was filled with angels. A huge heavenly host filled up the sky. They are praising God, saying... Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to, to all whom God favors. And just like that, they were gone. The angels left and went into heaven, leaving the shepherds in the silent darkness of the night, sheep muttering in the background. Honestly, the shepherds were probably muttering to themselves, too, like, um... What just happened? Could this really be true? Am I imagining it? Am I sleeping? Pinch me, quick, pinch me. Okay, I'm not sleeping. When they finally shook themselves back to reality, they, gather, get, they gathered together. Let's go, they said. Oh my goodness. Why did I post this? Too much, too much, too much. Uh, 2.15, okay. Four, or two. When the angels had ret returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. They ran as fast as their feet would take them and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger, just as the angels had said he would. Be. After the shepherds had seen Jesus, they ran off again. They told everyone and anyone they could find about what they saw in their fields and all about the baby. Men, women, children, donkeys, cats, the sheep, the weird guy who even sells the lamps. Everyone! All who heard were amazed. Meanwhile, Mary stayed silent near her newborn son. She kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. She couldn't stop staring at baby Jesus, her baby, but also God's son. Couldn't she be the right mom to him? Was she ready for this journey to begin? She thought these about these things over and over. The shepherds, after telling the whole town, went back to their fields. <sighs> The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them, because they had seen the child, just as the angel had said. And honestly, after this whole story, I, can't, I just can't stop thinking about the shepherds leaving the sheep unguarded. They totally ran off. What if something happened to the sheep? <sighs> I'm just kidding, but hey, it's a good point. There are lots of things in this life that can make us worried, aren't there? What we initially see might freak us out, and our re immediate reaction might be going, Go, go, bananas! Think about how the shepherds probably responded when the angel first showed up. Something that initially happened, something that might happen in your life that initially looked really scary. Something you didn't expect. Something unknown. A sudden change in plans, but getting past our initial reaction, hitting the pause button, 
waiting to see what God has in store and watching for God's plan to reveal itself, we can then see that things aren't as bad as they seem. The trip is skipping to that point, right? Don't let the initial fear or worry or stress take hold. Rest in the fact that God has a good plan. And when you do that, you will find a peace that surpasses all other understanding. When the storm kicks up, it's the peace that calms it. In the middle of a raging storm in the Sea of Galilee, when the disciples were freaking out, Jesus spoke to the storm. You know what he said? He said, peace, be still. As we're talking about finding peace, think about this question. What does it mean to have peace? Having peace might mean that even though you're afraid or uncertain, you're trusting God and letting his peace, the kind of peace that calms the storm, the kind of peace that calms your fears, flow through you. It's okay if you're not sure how to receive that peace because you can talk to God or your parents about it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your peace. Please help us to seek your peace and to remember that even in trying storms, trying times, when we feel like going cocoa bananas or we're so anxious we can't see anything else, help us to look for you like those shepherds did. They left what was, but they, they were startled and then they went to see the good news you had. They skipped ahead over their fear and they looked for you. Please help us to know, help us to know that we can always trust in you because you hold our lives and help us to keep peace. Amen. Thank you for listen thank you for watching Sabbath school everybody. Hope you have a good Sabbath and a good week. Bye. Well, time to put it all away. And I'm starting with you. Head first. Ah, that's the ticket. Right. Hey, Brandon. John. My name's Brandon. And I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. Mm -hmm. It's the last show of the year, John. Mm, how you feeling? I'm... Uh... Listen, the holidays were lovely. They always are. We'll take any opportunity we can to celebrate the birth of our Savior with the people we love, but can we just be honest and talk about how long this year has been? 365 days as usual. Or was it a leap year? So much stuff happened this year. Yeah, well, that's why I'm looking forward to the new year. You're actually looking forward to it. Yeah, it's a new beginning. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the new year with a positive attitude. No, absolutely not. I fell into that trap last year, and I'm not going to fall for it again.
I came into this year with goals. I was going to learn how to play the drums this year. You did learn how to play the drums. <sighs> what if next year is just as long as this year? Again, 365 days is sort of standard. What if, Brandon? What if? Don't ask me. <laughs> Hello, Brandon. Who? Someone who knows stuff. Uh. Oh. Uh -huh. Who are you and what do you know? I'm the new year, and I know that it's party time. Boom! See, John? Next year's gonna be a party. <laughs> so you're the actual physical manifestation of the new year? Ah, you catch on fast, pal. I'm a baby at the beginning of the year, and by the end of it, I'm an old dude. Weird. You're weird. So uh, what kind of year is it gonna be next year? Yeah, this year took forever. Who knows? Every year's different. But I can promise you this. Nothing bad is gonna happen in my year. You can promise that. I can promise anything I want. I'm a baby. I have zero life experience. Boom! Nothing wrong with a, a little optimism. You said it. I've got my whole life ahead of me. And nothing's gonna bring me down. But seriously, good things and bad things happen every year. I only remember the bad things. I made a list. Number one. Ugh, la, 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 I'm not listening, I'm not listening. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Shh, shh, shh. Did you want to make the baby cry? You didn't want to make the baby cry. Oh, I'm sorry, please, I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> gotcha, I can turn on the waterworks whenever I want. I'm a baby. Okay, look, here's the thing. There's no reason next year will be any better than this year. Sure, we say we want to make a difference when the new year rolls around. We want to exercise more and write that novel and end world hunger. But then the middle of January rolls around and we're right back where we started. Maybe my year will be different. Maybe my year will be awesome. Boom! Boom! How was that worth two booms? It wasn't. I'm a baby. I just made a boom boom. <laughs> Listen, John, I know it's been a long year, but that doesn't mean the future is something we should worry about. All right, prove me wrong then. Show me there's something to look forward to. I'll give it a shot. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Boom! Hey guys, Kellen, we're in a pretty bad way here. What's wrong? Oh, nothing, it's just the whole year. I get it, but it's about to be a new year. The new year is a baby. What does he know? Uh, like I said, it's pretty bad. I can tell. Do you maybe have something that can give us a little peace of mind? Oh, I know just where to look for peace. On a flannel graph. That'll have to do. Let's go. All right. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night, and they were taking care of their sheep. Sleep well, Harriet. Meh. What a beautiful starry night. Seems like any other night to me. Taking care of sheep is boring. Meh. No offense, Harriet. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to them. <gasps> Do you see that? Look! <gasps> Run away! <gasps> Come on, Harriet. Don't look at me like that. Meh. Do not be afraid. <gasps> it's easy for you to say. <sighs> what do you want? I bring you good news. Hold on. Boost me up. Oh. <laughs> now I can hear you better. Probably didn't happen this way, but whatever. The angel gave his message. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Messiah? Here? That's amazing! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! Oh, oh Harriet, Harriet! Are you all right? Oh, I'm falling, you didn't break my fall. Oh. How do we know you're for real? Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. 
little help. Oh. Oh, thank you. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appear. Well, now I'm not bored. The angels were praising God and saying, May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. After they had delivered their good news of peace that was for the whole world, the angels left. And the shepherds, well, they hurried on to Bethlehem. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, just like the angel said. I think it's this way. Hello there. An angel sent us. <gasps> but will you look at that? In a manger, wrapped in cloths. The angels were right. The baby is the Messiah, the Lord. We have to tell someone about this. Who? Everyone. Quickly. Oh, you can just, okay. After the shepherds had seen Jesus, they told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. Hey, everyone, we have news. We saw angels. The Lord has come to earth. He's going to bring peace. <laughs> Don't just stand there. We've got to tell everyone about this. Come on. Come on. Come on, everybody. Follow my lead. All who heard the shepherds were amazed at what they had said. The shepherds gave glory and praise to God. Everything they had seen and heard was just as they'd been told. The end. We've had so much fun doing this show all year long, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have fun next year. But I want you to know that even when things are stressful and don't always seem under control, we can still have peace. Because I can promise you that God is in control. God sending his son is good news for all people. It shows us just how much he loves us and helps us remember that God is with us no matter what kind of year we're having. And like the shepherds, we can spread the good news of God's peace to everyone we meet. We can work together with each other and with God to make the world better. And, well, that's why I have peace. That's why I have peace. That's why I have peace. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to you, too, Kellen. You feeling more peaceful, John? I am, yeah. I mean, no matter what kind of year I had, I know God has been looking out for us since the beginning of time. So it makes one year seem pretty small. Mm. That's a smart way to look at it. I am very smart. S-M-R-T. Uh-huh. Reveal the question. What does it mean to have peace? Right. Peace is more than just being calm or quiet, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Maybe it means being chill when bad things happen, you know, like me. <laughs> By the way, you're all out of Cheetos. What? <laughs> just kidding. I'm joking, I'm chill. You were joking too, right? We're not out of Cheetos. Talk about it together. What does it mean to have peace? Mm. Until next time, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. Happy New Year from the So-and-So Show. Yeah, seriously, did you eat all my Cheetos? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There's still four more days to go. Oh. <sighs> eh. Hey! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>